What's the number one question we get asked? What kind of solar do you have? How did you set it up? Did you have someone install it? That's not one question, that's all the questions. Yep. We We're gonna walk through version three of our solar system right now. We're gonna start with the workhorse of the operation. This is our battery bank. We have 12 100 amp hour Renogy batteries. Yeah, I'm sure you guys are gonna say it. Why did you get a 300 or a 400 amp? At the time, this is what we had. The price was right, we couldn't pass it up. So we have 1200 amp hours of battery and they're run in series parallel. So they're set up, so you have three batteries together and then four banks of batteries, which each three is sent to its own disconnect. On the wall in the far left corner, you've got your first MPPT. That is a 150 in the far left corner. And you'll notice that the wire runs up the wall and out to the left. That is for our deployable. So we have portable deployable solar panels that we put on the ground. They're 300 watts each, so 600 total. We run it off the one MPPT. The one in the middle is a 15070, and that one runs our 200 watt solar panels that are on the roof. We have five of those, so a thousand watts on the roof. So if you're keeping track, that's 600 on the ground, a thousand on the roof. The big one on the right, the 15100, that MPPT runs our 320 watt panels, and we have four of those on the roof. So total solar array is 2,880 watts on the roof and 1,200 amp hours of battery running through three MPPTs. I'm sure you're wondering, what's this little piece? I haven't talked about it. This is a battery protect is what it's called. Victron makes these. We put that in when we had the Renogy set up. We had a Frankenstein solar system to begin with where we had components from both. You can check out the video at the end for that. So that piece is redundant. Our, um, it, our Victron inverters now do the battery protect, so we don't have to have it, but since it's already wired in and it works fine, it's just a redundancy. And why we have a battery protect is so that we never overdraw our system because we're using all lithium batteries. And if we go too low on our voltage, we lose everything because there's no separate battery for our system. The whole trailer's inverted through this. Now, this little piece right here is called the Ruvi, R-U-U-V-I. This little puck is a temperature sensor, barometric pressure sensor, humidity sensor, and it tells us if there's movement, which if with a Rottweiler running around in here, there's always movement. But this is Bluetooth connected into the Victron system. We have three of these set up on our trailer. We have one in the battery base, so we don't have to worry about it getting too cold. We can monitor. Lithium batteries don't like to be below freezing, so we put that in there so we can measure both really the temperature and the humidity. We put one at the front pin box so that we can measure outside temperature. And then of course we have one on the inside of the trailer for Cali, and that's what we named it Cali. And that way we can see what the temperature and the humidity is on the inside of our trailer. So as you can tell, we take in our entire front battery bay, our, excuse me, our entire front bay for batteries, which usually this is where you would have either the factory inverter or you would have a generator. Our trailer didn't come with any gen prep whatsoever. So we had this beautiful area that we were able to upgrade. As you can see, this has worked really, really well. We've had this system in, this version of this system in since I think it was October. July of last year. There you go. She, <laughs> the boss has spoken. So July. Um, we've been doing variations of the system and really testing it. We are very methodical to make sure we test our system before we talk about it because we want to make sure, one, we know everything about it, and two, it operates the way we planned on it operating. So we're going to go around and we're going to show you the other side of our pass-through, which is this back wall, and you'll see the rest of our solar system. So I got to give Chris some props because he actually took the solar class. He paid for it, took it, and built our system out. How do they say? Just like the uh, uh, hot rod world, right? Built, not bought. <laughs> but there was a whole lot of buying going into the building. <laughs> but for us and for Chris, it was important for him to understand our solar system inside yeah. and out, which is awesome. This is the brains of the operation. The other side is the workhorse. This is the smart side. So we use the Lynx distributor system. You see that here. We have the Lynx smart shunt. 
and then the distributor here, and then more distributor here. Well, the reason we went with this particular system is each one of these lines is fused. I love the ability to have it fused. We also, as we talked about on the other side with the batteries, there are series parallels. So each one of these disconnect has 300 amp hours of battery coming into it, and then we have four disconnects. We'll show that on the other side. This is our Servo GX. This is truly the brains of the operation. So this runs our Wi-Fi and our Bluetooth so that we can communicate remotely and know what the, the system's doing at all times. We decided to do two of the multi plus. So we have two 3000 watt inverters. Realistically, they're about 2400 watts each, which means that we've got about 4800 watts of inverted power on our trailer, which we have 13,500 um, ACs versus 15 Ks. So we can run three ACs as long as we stagger start them. We did put soft starts on all three of our ACs just to make it a little easier on the system. It won't shock it. The nice thing about the two inverters is that with the full sun, like we have today, we can actually charge our batteries while running an AC. So we can run one AC as long as we have daylight. We can run two ACs and we'll draw down. But the nice thing is if we absolutely have to cool it down, we can quickly run all three ACs, but the batteries become a consideration. Now coming across here, we did a thermostat in here and we set it up with automation. So the temperature sensor is right inside above the Victrons because we wanna be able to keep an eye on it. I don't wanna get too hot in here. I've got it set up so that if it hits 95 degrees, it turns on the fans. So we have two four inch, very powerful fans. Those fans, create negative pressure because we have holes in the floor of our pass-through because it came that way from the factory. So it sucks the outside air in and draws out all the hot air. And then directly below it, we've got our, mon uh, excuse me, our servo touch monitor. This is the little one, it's the five inch. And that way we can control anything we want on the system. It also works on an app. So we use it on the iPad and our iPhone. Having the full system integrated has been amazing because we can monitor, change, upgrade, do whatever we wanna do right off of the system. In our propane bay here, we have some secrets. Let me show you. It's not a secret anymore because I'm telling you. So this is the other side of the battery bay. I told you that we have one MPPT dedicated to our deployables. That's what these are. So these are our solar cables or PV cables. This is a waterproof box. And then we have a 30 amp breaker in here. That way we can control our power going to and from our MPPT without having to shut down the whole system. We can shut down just that. We have the back of the exhaust for the four inch fan and as you can see in the bottom this is wide open so we vent the hot air out of here and it works like a charm it does these solar deployables are amazing they pack up light and compact and they fold out really nice and easy yeah and the nice thing is we have two different sets of cables we have one at 10 foot one at 20 foot so if we're just going to be right next to the trailer we'll do the 10 foot and we'll chase the sun but depending on how our position, we'll do the 20 foot and we could take them around to the other side. So they only take about two minutes to set up and it gives us an extra 600 watts of solar charge capability. Really nice add on for our system. Which is great. We use this quite a bit where we're dry camping in Key West. Yes. And I do most of the cooking during the day when the sun is high and we have more solar coming in. As you can tell, the wires come through and I've already got the breaker turned off, so it's safe to disconnect them, but that's it. You have this that you undo, the two little wires. And it, of course, when you're trying to do it on video, you always look like a klutz, <laughs> but that's just the nature of things. And what we do is we run the one side hot, one side negative, and so we're running them into each other. There we go. That's it. Then we stick this right next to the bay. We wrap this in around the actual breaker and we have a, a piece of Velcro here that we use to just hold up the wire so that it stays up out of the way. Um, we've never had any problems as far as like water or any kind of moisture or anything in here. And of course it is set up on a breaker so we do kill the power so there's nothing running into our MPPT. We put that away and as you saw with Martha right there, it doesn't take long and that is what it looks like folded and that's what it looks like rolled out and um, it's real easy you just fold it fold it and move the wire and fold it just come up, up. 
you go. That's all there is to it as far as the solar deployables. If you're looking for an option uh, for a system that you don't have a lot of roof room or you don't want to have things mounted on your roof, I can't say enough. Uh, we're, again, not sponsored, but these Renogy solar panels are really cool. And there you go. We'll put them away just like that. Another shameless plug for the uh, Morai tray. This is where it's really nice. I can shove it out of my way and get to all my solar stuff. So as you can see, we have four battery disconnects. And like I mentioned, you have three batteries per disconnect. So three, six, nine, 12. They're coming off of and into the Lynx distributor. And then as we come back across this, we've got our Renogy deployables. So these are the two 300 watts each. So 600 watts deployable solar panels. And then this is the other fan that is vented into the propane area. Uh, bulk 12 volt, very high, high straight. So they actually move a lot of air. And tell them, so the lights we moved into the battery bay, you want to tell them what we did instead so we have light in this bay. Yeah, there you go. We have these strip lights, so we put them on, we tapped into the 12 volt, and they illuminate our entire bay, plus we ran the strips behind. So it illuminates behind the pass-through wall so that if we need to see anything back there, which we have really easy access to, we can do that. That's brilliant. All right, we're going to go around and show you how we fused and set this system up. See my little pointer here? I wanted to show you. So these are the PV cables or solar panel cables coming off of the roof. And as you can tell, we set them up on 30 amp breakers. Every single panel, hot and negative, so red and black, is on its individual breaker. We were very serious about setting this up for a safe operation. We wanted to be able to turn off the power to absolutely everything. This is our 50 amp breaker. This is the 120 or the house power. So these are the ins and outs from the inverter. So you got line in, line out from the inverter. They go into the box, out of the box, into the breaker panel behind the wall. The nice thing again, we can turn off every aspect of this. We've got disconnects on the battery. We've got breakers on every solar cable or PV wire, and we've got breakers set on all the power wires. So 100% everything is either fused or broke or both, meaning that it has a breaker and a fuse. Nerd alert, I'm gonna summarize this for you. You ready? <laughs> So okay. we've got 2,280 watts of solar panels, which is an ideal world that doesn't exist. That's about the most you could hope for in a perfect world. We have 12 100 amp hour batteries, so 1,200 amp hours. We have two 3,000 watt inverters, so our whole trailer is inverted, and again, reality is about 4,800 watts of actual usable power. Now, all that means nothing. You know what matters the most? Happy wife, happy life. How do you use the solar system? <laughs> I use it to my advantage. So I use um, my baby Traeger, yep. my air fryer. I do most of my cooking during the day when it's sunny out, uh, just to maximize all that. From my perspective, mm -hmm. where it matters the most is I can run the bedroom AC all night long mm -hmm. when we're at a boondockers welcome or a harvest house or we're dry camping. So we never have to worry about killing our batteries overnight and we can stay comfortable because us two plus Cali mm -hmm. are always in our bedroom. Yeah. Another big thing that we didn't touch upon, a big reason why we did switch uh, the Renogy components out for Victron, we couldn't dial down safely. Yeah, the nice thing about the Victron components is we went to the CrossFit Games this year. If you haven't seen it, check out that video. And we were on a 30 amp site. The 30 amp site, well, of course, only has 30 amps. Our system is a 50 amp. So we could go into the Victron, turn it down to 27 or 28 or 30 amps and not overdraw the power coming from the grid, in our case, the cable was my concern, right? If you're trying to draw 50 amps or a 30 amp cable, those things don't compute. So having the ability to really draw down the system and control our input, if we want to go all the way down to 15, we can and plug into a house. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing because we want to make sure we're safe. Chris can control everything and monitor it by an app. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, between this and then having our, um, our AC system set up with the micro airs, we can turn on, turn off, we can adjust the temperature, we can run high, low. It's cool being able to monitor and control the entire system. And with the Ruvies, the R-U-U-V-I, the Ruvies that we have set up on there, I can tell you what our temperature is, I can tell you what our humidity is at any given time in three different locations. And then the other thing that we have on there is called the Mopika. And that's just a propane sensor, but that is also integrated into the Victron app. So we can see not only the temperature, the barometric pressure, the humidity, we can also monitor our propane. Now, some of this is probably 
probably overkill and you're probably like, yeah, whatever. But I warned you, nerd alert. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think? Let us know down below in the comments. This system, we've been testing it and trying it out for months. It's been a process evolving and trying out new accessories. Changing Just, components, yeah. making sure everything works the way we want it to. And it fits our lifestyle perfectly now. And we're gonna do a future video of 10 reasons why you don't need solar, which is kind of counterdictive because look at the monster we have. Most importantly, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please do it. This means the world to us. And most importantly, enjoy every moment.